For most family businesses, one of the biggest challenges is thinking about succession. And we're now going to spend some time just reviewing how you go about succession planning in your businesses, the challenges, what happens in terms of the thinking around it and uh, executing it. So Purwin, if you want to start with yourself. Yes, it's very important. I mean, if you have the long-term vision for the business, you've got to think the long-term. And I've appointed a managing director. I've got a great team in place, um, you know, from finance director to operations technical. And my managing director came in two years ago. I've had a couple of managing directors before and didn't last very long. <laughs> because, you know, for me, the trust is absolutely the key. I've got to have people in the business that I can trust. Uh, what I trust, say trust, trust doesn't mean in money terms. It's not the monetary thing only. Trust in terms of someone who will take my business as seriously, be passionate about it as seriously as I am. For me, it's very important that my baby is being looked after, by the team of people that I trust, who got nothing to hide, who haven't got a second agenda. It's SNA Foods and making SNA Foods successful. And I absolutely support that because um, the entrepreneur, the founder of the company, it is their baby. You know, they did start it. That is, that has been their whole life. And I think one of the most difficult things for them is, what do I do now? They can't sometimes see when I'm not doing that day-to-day -day management. What do I do? And it's it's. It's evolving another um, role, isn't it? And another focus to allow um, the, the successor, managing director, whoever, to continue with that business. When you don't have something else to do, because you are intelligent, you know, you're creative and you're energetic, then you get bored mm -hmm. and you start so then interfering. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that before you bring somebody else in, that you're absolutely clear this is my, you know, patch, this is your patch, yeah. and, you know, we work together. The other thing, I think, with family businesses is that there comes a cusp where they actually have to become more professional. Um, and it has to, they have to widen um, the vision and who's involved in the actual management of that company. And I think it's imperative, or it becomes imperative at some point, to bring in outside people to sit on the board or to guide and facilitate healthy communication if there is some sibling um, rivalry, which very often there is, um, or it's parent and, and son or daughter, that somebody can come in and, and, and rationalise communication. Why wouldn't you not bring somebody in from outside? Because yeah. if your vision is, if your purpose is to make your business successful, <clears throat> then I would do whatever I have to do. And I think what happens is that entrepreneurs, especially the people who are starting up or a small business, they don't have the skill to manage people, probably. And I think because they don't have that, that they don't have confidence, and I've heard people saying, oh, he's too good, you know, I don't want to bring him because I, I wouldn't know how to manage him. Yeah. And I think the the answer is to go and invest in yourself, learn how to do it, get a coach or a mentor to help you. The answer isn't not to bring people in because then your business will suffer. In terms of succession planning for us, we've got a long way to go till we sort of look at children because um, our, our two boys are three and four years old. So we've got a period of time between now and then where, you know, giving people like Chloe and other people in the business more responsibility, more reward, perhaps a shareholding, etc. You know, is is part of our sort of near term planning and that's what we need to consider before we get to any kind of stage of handing it on to, to children in the future. And I think that's very often what happens with entrepreneurs though. I think there comes a point where they know they've got to do the succession planning and, and move forward. But actually they don't want to. They're quite happy doing what they want to do and why shouldn't they? Um, it's just that awful thought, isn't it, that something might suddenly happen and the business isn't looked after. But when they are energetic and absolutely full of enthusiasm and don't want to let go, then, you know, in some ways I do support, why should they? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's getting the balance. Yeah. 
I think that's it's important. What suits your business? What's right for your business? You can't mm. just you know cut and paste and just take it from somebody else's business. Every business is so different. It is. Yeah. So it depends what your purpose mm. is in life. Mm. Lisa and I we meld really well together because I've got a sales marketing background. She's got an operational background, and we fit quite well. She's, however. Um, probably more likely to want to go off on her own and do something else at some point before I am. So succession planning isn't just from us down, it's actually between us and what happens. So, you know, there's different scenarios suit different yeah. businesses, as you say.